guys, Tasha here from Stardust Gold Crochet. Today we're going to learn how to work a graph. So here I have three examples of some graphs that I've created. This one's a very large graph, 100 by around 80, and these are two small graphs. And what you can do with a graph is you can create really cool patterns, hat patterns, you can do C2C blankets. I did a few hat patterns that actually have words on them, which is really cool. These are all graph patterns. You can also do Fair Isle style hats like the one I did here. You can see that's floated yarn in the Fair Isle. So let's get down to the basics of how to read a graph. So you can do a graph and you can work C2C blankets or row by row. It's up to you. Graphs have each square, um, they have a bunch of squares, it's like grid paper and each square represents one stitch. So here you'd have one, two, three, four, five stitches. So there's different ways when you're working a graph. If you're gonna do a row by row graph, there's a direction of the work. First you're gonna work a foundation single crochet row or a chain. And then when you work your first row, you wanna make a little arrow down by the side so you can see the direction that you're going. It helps you keep track of your rows, and each line of the graph is a row. Normally in a graph, there'll be numbers on the side to indicate which row you're at. They're also on the top. The little triangle here represents the center of your graph. So when you're doing your graphs, you're gonna start at the bottom right-hand corner, and you're gonna work one direction. When you get to this direction, you'll make your chain and then you'll work back in the other direction. And it's always good to go ahead and mark off each line or even each square so you remember where you're, where you're left off because sometimes it can, when you put a project down, you come back and you think, oh gosh, where, where was I? So let's talk about symm symmetry. So this graph is symmetrical. This is, a, again, talking about the direction of the work. So because this graph is symmetrical, you can work it any way you'd like. You can work it from bottom to top, top to bottom, left to right, right to left. Other graphs are not symmetrical like this one and also like this one. So these are best to work directionally and mark off your rows as you work. So another thing about graphs is they can be worked doing uh, C2C blankets, corner to corner blankets. In corner to corner blankets, the direction of the work goes from corner to corner. So if you're working from here to here, usually you start off in the bottom right hand corner and the direction of your work is up this way. And then you increase your here and then you work down that way. Increase there and work up this way. Increase there, work down that way. So that's basically how a C2C works. You're working diagonally, and I'll go ahead and put a graphic in the video here so you can see the direction of the work. There's a few questions people often ask when they're working a graph, is how big my, will my blanket be? So normally a smaller graph like this is 25 by 25 inches. You'll have to do a swatch and then head on over and check out my graphing calculator. It's a C2C calculator, so you can work your swatch and then put your numbers in of how many stitches per inch you have, and that'll just tell you exactly how big your blanket will be according to the hook size and your yarn size that you're using. So everybody has a different tension, and it really helps to figure out how big your blanket's going to be by using the calculator. There's a, I'm also going to make a row by row calculator so you can do the same thing if you're working a graph row by row. So let's talk about the stitches that you can use to create a graph. So you can use a single crochet stitch. Usually the single crochet stitches are worked row by row. And you can use different methods for color changing like intarsia, intarsia. or you can use a floating if you're going to work it in the round. Sometimes you can work a graph in the round and then you float the yarn behind and you're never going to see that backside. So that's really great for that. 
But if you're doing a double-sided blanket, you're going to want to use that intarsia technique where you hide the yarn and you can bring it forward. I'll put some links down below for how to do all those. And some of the larger graphs will actually be sectioned off. So you might come across um, a graph pattern like some of mine actually. I've sectioned them off so they're larger so you can actually see the squares better. Because as you can see with this, there's so many, it's really hard to see your color changes and your squares. So sometimes the larger sectioned off parts will help you with the larger, get looking at it to see a larger square. So I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. I hope I did. If I didn't, please leave a comment below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I also have a few blanket calculators and a video, video on uh, C2C basics. So I'll put those links down below for you. Thanks for visiting my channel, you guys. Hit that like button and sub subscribe to my channel. Um, also hit that bell so you can be notified of future videos. I have a Stitch Explorer Saturday series I do every week with a new stitch. So for all beginners and designers, go ahead and check those out on my YouTube channel. Thanks guys. Happy crocheting.